Well, good morning. It's Days with Jordan the Lion coming to you live from a, another dark, dreary, rainy day in Hollywood, California. So unfortunately, that fantastic vlog that I promised you guys yesterday or that I I teased you with hoping that the weather would cooperate is just not going to happen because I can't go out and go into this place uh, while it's raining. So we're going to have to find something else. But my friend Trish is on her way over now because uh, she has a tripod of mine that we took to her party so I can use it on that vlog. Um, but we're going to have breakfast together. So I haven't got to see Trisha for like probably a month or two. She's one of my all-time favorite people. Um, and I can't wait to see her. So we'll just see how the day unfolds. I really don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what I'm going to do. Hey, John. Are you going to go outside too? You want to go too? Come on! Definitely need a batch of the coffee. At least one more batch of the coffee. I've already had one, but we're going to do it again before we get this day popping. Well, it's official. I just got my invite for the uh, wedding in Sweden. There it is. Can you see that? That's where we're going to be. August 5th, we're going to be in Sweden, vlogging from Sweden. Okay, well these are these are the type of socks that I buy that I was looking for that day. They're body glove. These are not the colors, but these are the only colors I could find online in my size. A 10 to 13, so unfortunately I'm going to be stuck with a pair that has like a pink band on it, but uh, eh, whatever, nobody ever sees them. These are what I usually wear. You can kind of see, these are the white pair. But I have a yellow pair, a green pair, a red pair, a black pair, and they all have the Rasta band going across it. Fortunately, I just couldn't find them, and so I ended up having to get these other multi-weirdo color neon ones. <laughs> okay, well, since I've been 10 days fasting, this is like, this is treat day, and Trisha is a donut fanatic, um, addict, so she brought me to Kettle Glaze. These are actually really well made, so they're not quite as bad for you as other places. I've decided. You've decided. Let's do it. Can I do blueberry vanilla? Thank you. You have to try one of these. Oh, I know. So I was going to get there. Oh, okay. I was a big fan of mayo. I was a big fan of mayo. She's created a bit of a line. Cameron, you heading out? What? <laughs> Trisha and I just spent like an hour in the donut shop and I don't even think we finished a full donut. It's the best place on earth. Yep. Stretch! Did you miss me? I'm home! Well, like I said, Trisha and I went to have breakfast. We went over there, ordered our donuts, sat down at a table, and we talked for an hour and we never ended up eating a donut. We, we broke apart about half of one of them and pieced on it together. And, uh, and then I just brought a donut home. I just brought one home, so. Still doing pretty good. I know you guys probably thought I was kidding, but I wasn't. I'm still gonna keep doing it. Well, in the end, that's how much I was able to get out of it. That thing's completely full, and I'm just gonna drink the rest of what's in there. Well, it's dried out a little bit, so we're gonna go vlog something for my mom. She's had a request for quite a while that I have not taken care of, and this is part of her Christmas present. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas Eve. Check out that house. That's not what we came to see, but check that out. Pretty cool. Lana Turner was one of the biggest actresses of the 40s and 50s. And in 1958, her name was known all over houses all over the world for a murder committed here at her house. See, Lana had been married, oh, seven or eight times, and she was one of those people who believed in uh, someday she would find a Prince Charming and they would live happily ever after. And so she went through quite a few husbands trying to find this. Now, on her second husband, she actually ended up having a daughter named Cheryl. And Cheryl would eventually become, well, another name that was known all over the country.
When Cheryl was 10 years old, her mother married a European man named Lex Barker, and uh, that became Lana's fourth husband. At the age of 10 and a half, Lex Barker started raping Cheryl for two years. And uh, finally, when Cheryl finally decided to tell somebody, she told her grandmother. Um, in the midst of this story, her grandmother went and got Lana. They told Lana the full story, and they immediately called the authorities and got rid of, started proceedings to get rid of Lex. Uh, Lex fleed the country, took off to Europe, and actually hid out there, and Cheryl was told to just put it out of her mind and kind of forget that it ever happened. Now Cheryl was in a boarding school for most of her life and well one of the weekends that she came home was uh, when her mother was nominated for an Oscar. And uh, they went to an Oscar party and they were back here at this house celebrating and Lana's boyfriend at the time Johnny Stampinato came and Lana and Johnny began fighting. And that was actually the first time that Cheryl had ever heard them fight. She actually got along really well with Johnny Stompanato and actually really liked him. She said he was a really nice guy. Um, he even bought her a horse. And so what would eventually happen was kind of a surprise to everyone. Uh, one night, Lana came into Cheryl's room while Cheryl was home for Easter break. And it actually happened to be Good Friday. Went into her room and said, uh, while Cheryl was working on a book report, it said, I'm going to tell Johnny tonight that it's over. Johnny was actually a, uh, he was kind of a mobster. He actually worked for the uh, famous mobster, Nicky Cohen, and was really just kind of a bodyguard, though he led Lana to believe that he was much more. And that's kind of what Lana fell in love with. So he was desperately holding on to Lana to give himself some sort of, you know, some sort of a legitimacy and uh, and I'm sure he obviously really loved her too I mean Lana was such an attractive and beautiful and charming woman it would be hard not to fall in love with Lana Turner and if you don't know who Lana Turner and she was in the postman always rings twice she was in Peyton Place uh, imitation of life Zigfield girl um, and she actually auditioned to play Scarlet and Gone with the Wind I saw her screen test and she actually was really, really good. So, the night of Good Friday, she comes in Cheryl's room and tells her that she's going to tell Johnny that it's over and that she doesn't want anything to do with him. And while this is happening, Cheryl's in her room and she actually hears uh, the couple fighting and Johnny telling Lana that when a man makes his living with his hands, Johnny cuts off his hands. And when a woman makes her living with her face, that he'll cut off her face and if he can't do it, he'll find somebody that can. And uh, Cheryl heard this, went and pounded on the door and tried to get in just so she could kind of break it up, kind of help talk some sense into them and uh, they wouldn't open the door. Cheryl ran downstairs fearing for her mother's life, looking for anything that she could possibly get to help stop the argument. And on a cutting board, she saw an eight inch long kitchen knife. She grabbed the knife, ran upstairs, and started pounding on the door asking for her mother or Johnny to open the door and let her in. Um, as Johnny opened the door in haste as he and Lana were arguing, Johnny came lunging out the door and right into the knife that Cheryl was holding. Uh, he immediately fell backwards, plunged onto the ground, and Cheryl dropped the knife, ran to her room, locked the door, and curled up on her bed and she said she stayed there for about 10 or 15 minutes until her mother finally went and got her and brought her in to the room and they called the police. Now Cheryl described everything that happened to the police and when the police came she mentioned that Lana had had the fight with Johnny up in this room right here and that's where Johnny had been stabbed. As soon as that happened, Cheryl ran down the hall to her bedroom down here. 
Cheryl Crane remained in juvenile hall for three weeks until uh, she finally had a preliminary trial. When Lana took the stand and explained what happened, that uh, that it was actually done in, in an accident and how it was done that Cheryl had stabbed and that it was all in self-defense, um, it was ruled a justifiable homicide and the case actually never went any further. Now, the son of Johnny, Johnny Stompanato actually filed a, tried to file a civil claims suit um, accusing Lana of being actually the one who did the stabbing. And that was kind of something that people have thought for years. But uh, as the time went on and as Cheryl got older and she wrote books describing this and giving interviews, she's never faltered from the story that she did in fact stab Johnny Stompanato. Uh, Cheryl was 14 years old at the time and she said, for the rest of her life, um, she would always be a footnote to Lana Turner. Every time Lana Turner would be mentioned, it would always say, whose daughter in 1958 stabbed her boyfriend. It, was, it would always be followed by that. Um, and Cheryl actually said it wasn't until the late 80s that her mother actually looked at her and said, you know, I actually never thanked you for that. Thank you. And she said that was finally what gave her some peace after all those years. Like I said, the, uh, the murder would have actually happened right up here in this room. That room, right in the doorway, and Cheryl would have ran down the hall to her bedroom, which was right down there. Surprisingly, Lana Turner's career wasn't ended by this scandal, and she did go on and continue to make movies. Lana Turner is that actress you always hear about being discovered at the Schwab's drugstore, sitting in a counter. That's always been attributed to her, and if you can believe um, what ended up happening after the murder and after that whole controversy was that a lot of studios were afraid to take any chances on her because of that. And so what ended up happening is that um, there was a studio that was willing to take a chance on her, and uh, it was for the movie Imitation of Life. And the way that they kind of structured her contract to make sure was uh, they it would be that she would be paid almost only in royalties. And uh, this turned out to backfire because the movie was a huge success. Lana um, made a great deal of money off this. And this ended up keeping her working consistently until the late 60s when uh, she had just got too old to portray her image and she didn't want to portray anything else. Here in the neighborhood, we actually decided to stop off at uh, Will Rogers Park. And you guys might have heard of this park because, for one thing, it's right across the street from the Beverly Hills Hotel. And if that doesn't give you a clue, this is the park and that bathroom straight across here that I'm going to take us over to is where George Michael got in trouble for, uh, for masturbating in the uh, bathroom when he was staying across the street. And I actually just stopped here to give Ja a little bit of a fun walk because it's a pretty nice little park. But I figured, well, why not show you guys the Beverly Hills Hotel where Clark Gable and so many people had stayed and where the cover of Hotel California was taken. Let's see if we can't get a little bit of a good shot right here. But I figured this is a pretty nice little fountain that people come to. And uh, I know you guys have all heard the George Michael story. Why not show you that? We'll even show you the bathroom. Now I told you guys that today's vlog was actually part of my mom's Christmas present. This spot was not on her wish, on her wish list. But I know she will get an absolute kick out of me being here and going to that little building. So we are going to go over to that building. Josh checking out the, uh, the ducks. But mom, you just literally texted me, and when I told you I'm adding a little surprise, this part of the video is the surprise. Look at your grand puppy. Ja, what are those? Ja. Look what he sees. Those are turtles. Those are like three turtles on a little, uh, like a little incline ramp. He 
You think that this picture had anything to do with George Michael? Ah, uh, never mind. Well, come on. I know you guys all want me to go and show you that bathroom. Well, I'm not going to do it. I'm a little higher class than that. Well, I'm actually not. So I'm going to go in there and I'm going to show you guys the bathroom right now. Pretty cool fountain and a great view. And obviously you can have celebrity encounters over here apparently. There it is. You know, I think it would be nice if I could touch your body. I actually did not know this existed. Did you see this? There's a time capsule in here. 1914 to 2014. I wonder what was in it. Somebody, I feel like not doing any more work today. Can you look up and find out what was in the time capsule for me? Pretty nice little park. Never really had gotten to spend a whole lot of time here um, because it's in such a weird congested area. It's not a place that you, uh, you ever think to like actually stop and go walk around. Oh, and guys, I actually threw that donut away. I decided not to have it. Just having a few bites over there with Trisha was enough for me. I got rid of it. There you go, guys. I don't know what's going on up here, but they got the whole street blocked off. Showdown. Hey, Santa. Have fun delivering presents in this tonight. Sheesh. Talk about a rough night. Well... It's the end of the vlog, guys, and it's officially Christmas Eve. So I hope everybody has something that you're thankful for. I hope that you all have something that you go to sleep tonight and find something tomorrow to enjoy with your friends, your family, watch a great Christmas movie, and uh, man, just be happy you're alive. I didn't get any snow this year, and I always love the snow, but we've got torrential rain, and uh, if you can't tell by my hair, I was out in it, and uh, at least I got that. I guess it's better than just having a boring, calm day. So, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas Eve, and of course, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good night.